Hello everybody and thanks for tuning in. Uh, this little guy has kind of taken the internet by storm and there's a good reason for that. It's because it's $15.99 and then you can whoop it just like you would this guy. But this guy, I think the cheapest you can get him is $49.99. So you can see I've already had an FPV camera. That's from my original video. But what we're going to do is we're going to upgrade it just like I did with this one. And it's not just like, I guess that's a misstatement. It'll be very, very similar. Let's say that. So I've got me my extra end from the camera. We're going to solder this on to the end here because we have this unique battery plug. So we'll solder this right on top. We won't be damaging that on the bottom. And we're doing that so that we can run my batteries of choice for the whooping around. And they're my LiPo. Uh, 205 and 175s. I actually haven't flown the 205s very much. I've stuck really mainly with 175s. But there's a couple different batteries on the market out here, and I truly haven't tested very many of them. But I think these are pretty good. I buy my LiPos for other purposes, and uh, I I think they're a good quality battery. There are good quality other good quality batteries out there, but I can't speak for their the little ones that will work for this. So the reason why we're here is most of this is pretty elementary. These are gnarly motors, G-N-A-R-L-Y, and they perform in the uh, motor test that I did, and I'll put a card right up here for that, very, very similarly to the Spintech motors. I, again, I always get this question, um, what about the micro motor warehouse? You know, and I like everything he Benedict does. I, I tune into his workshops, I watch his videos, and I've learned a lot, but... I can get these for less than half the price and that allows me to take money and spend it on other things like more cameras because you can see I don't use protection <laughs> so they break so let's uh, let's weigh this up this one isn't equal yet so we'll take him out of the picture and we'll see what the weight difference is and what we're about to do tear it out just to be sure even though it shows zero so just as it is, without the extra lead, without the longer battery, is 20.4. Okay, so let's let's go ahead. Let's put that back. 20.5 this time. Must be a margin of error for my scale. So then we add the battery. Now we get 25.1. So I'm going to step aside, and I'm going to modify this little guy, and then we're going to take a look at uh, what the weight is in. And then I'll do some flight videos. Flight videos are more going to be about fun. I thought initially, I was like, I should do some laps around the house. Well, there's no way I can fly the same flight pattern twice. <laughs> it's, it's just not possible for me. Um, but we'll take them both for a spin, and then all things will be equal. And after a few flights, I'll uh, maybe give my opinion, but I think it's going to be fun. I've upgraded the uh, E101, or I think I'm going to call it the Whoop E and the tiny whoop they're almost identical and uh, let's weigh this up now we originally were at 25.2 shouldn't be much of a weight difference at all and we'll weigh it with the dish the original battery here so 25.2 still even though we've changed out the motors and we've got a little pigtail here for plugging in so now let's add the uh, battery of choice for my flight Oh, jeez. 25.7, so half a gram more than stock. 25.7 versus the tiny whoop. So 1.2 grams less the tiny whoop is. But some of this isn't equal because if you look at the, these are the same cameras, but the manufacturing obviously has the, the uh, coax on the whoopee a little bit taller so if I were to estimate I would say that's a half a gram maybe maybe it's less maybe it's more but that's pretty thin coax on there but it is pretty dense and stiff so really close now we're gonna go fly and have some fun well it's no mystery I've got some uh, neon bracelets I bought from the dollar store and I've hung them all up all down in the basement and it's nice and dark down there but nice and dark means hard, or at least hard for me.
these hoops aren't huge, but you can tell I've got two different ones, and they are the longer ones. I think I got them for, I think I already said this, a dollar at the dollar store. But here off the bat, I'm not doing too bad, but, oh, jeez, didn't even see that thing. All right, let's reset, same spot. Let's see if we can do this. Creeping, creeping. Okay, we got that one now. This one's a bit tricky hanging off the wall, because if we get too close, we get sucked to it. Oh, and I can't get off, so I just try to fly over it. Just get off the wall. Keep going. Oh, what was that? Must have hit an edge or something. I have no idea. Now I've bumped into something else, and I'm all over the place. Ah, reset again. So flight after flight is kind of the same thing over and over again, and I'm I'm cutting out the uh, the frustration that is building while I'm doing this. And it's it's granted it's late. Uh, everybody else is in bed. Um, I thought this would actually be fun, but it turned out to be more of a frustrating exercise because I could not figure out what was going on. I really felt incompetent as a pilot, and I started thinking, ah, it's just one of those days. You know, I I can't fly today. I'm no good at this. Um, you can see I get sucked against the fish tank now. Oh, but I happen to recover thanks to the hoops. Now we're going for another gate. And this one's a lot easier for me. Uh, the one we just went through. The one we're coming up on, I get too close to the wall again. And down we go. I'm trying to recover. I really don't know where I am. I'm backing up a little bit. I'm sucked into the wall again. It kind of goes like this for a while. I'm bumping all over everything, trying to get out of that hallway. I don't know what I've hit now. Now I'm stuck. Reset. Try again. So you're probably detecting a bit of a theme here. I keep having to reset, and I'm not even getting one lap in. Well, this continues through several batteries. And finally, I get down to my last battery, and I decide, well, let's, uh, let's go back to the tiny hoop. Let's try to figure out what's going on here. So we get our tiny hoop and initially I didn't think much of it but um, I head right for the uh, the gate or neon bracelet whatever you want to call it and I get through that one and we spin around and we head towards the second one and now we can see the other one off in the distance gotta watch out for the outcropping of the stairs I lined it up ah oh, nice there we go alright got a little bounce off the floor not too bad Oh, oh, a little tangled, but I get out of there. Oh, there's that shelving unit. Got hung up on that once. Through that one, no problem. Here we go. This will be a challenge, right? I get stuck to the wall again. Ah, easy peasy. So I'm going for my second lap. I couldn't even complete one on the uh, the whoopee or e-whoop. I'm not sure what we should call that thing. Seems wrong to call it a tiny whoop killer or anything like that. You know, tiny whoop was what it was. And it continues to be quite popular, I'm sure. But you can see I'm a whole lot more successful now. And this didn't make much sense to me. And actually, after I completed my runs here, I felt quite uh, upset. And I thought, well, I just have to throw this stuff out. Uh, I have to redo the video because people have been asking about upgrades and some differences, and I thought this might answer some of those questions. And then this this flight footage was just for fun, but the flight footage for me wasn't fun because this part is sure I'm flying through successfully, I'm hitting these gates, but the other five batteries that I went through was not fun. Um, I got all sorts of schmutz and uh, schmutz uh, hair and stuff that you know you're just in basements and from animals and dust bunnies and stuff and I had to clean out motors and take props off and uh, just didn't have a very good experience so I closed everything down and I went to bed and as I'm laying there in bed I'm still trying to sort out what was going on and I thought you know did I overestimate what the E101 is is it not as good as I thought it was is it not as good as my FPV footage that I included in the video was so you start questioning yourself, and I well, eventually I, I nodded off, and in the morning I decided, well, let's go watch this footage, and I watch it, and I watch it, and I watch it, and it occurs to me, I can fly the tiny whoop better than the e-whoop, because I can see a little bit, 
as I head through these gates, you can't see things clearly, but you can see things moving in the distance. And that gives you some idea of where you're going. And are you pressing far enough forward on the stick? And especially this one with the wall. I couldn't even see that wall once I got anywhere near the gate. I would just get sucked to the wall, and then that was trouble. So I decided to take it for a daytime run. I left all my gates up, and I got the whoopee or L whoop or whoop e whoop, the whoop whoop. I don't know what we're gonna call that thing. And I'm just kind of go for a run to prove to myself that this thing does fly. And right away, I can feel the difference. I can tell where I'm going. Obviously, even though you can't hardly see the gates, I can see them as they get close, and I can get right through them. The one on the wall that was previously impossible, I can cut right through that, no big deal. But I think I make three or four laps here, and uh, I'm flying a new battery actually because it showed up on the day of this particular flight, the day after I'd done my nighttime flying, and I wanted to give it a shot. My excitement wouldn't allow me to let it sit on the desk. Um, Whoop Juice is the name of the battery that I'm flying right here from East Coast FPV, and I'll probably say that again when we get back to the desk. But I think we all get the point. I'm going to go ahead and wrap up this footage, and then we'll head back to the desk and have a slight discussion. After all of that, uh, we can tell, or we could say, or declare a winner if you're flying in complete, or near complete and total darkness, the Tiny Whoop does better because you can see. Um, the LEDs are brighter and they're white, and therefore they do light up the area better. But again, we've got a monster price difference between the two of these. You can FPV this one uh, for nearly the price of just the Embladen Detrix. And in the uh, my testing, I've been flying these batteries that you see down here. And since the beginning, um, when I started doing this video, I have some Whoop Juice batteries. These are from East Coast FPV. And I also got some motors from them too. And they send stickers. I don't know about you, but I love stickers. I stick them on any of my quad stuff, boxes and whatever things I keep stuff in. So, uh, Whoop Juice from East Coast FPV. And in the last run that you see with the uh, Whoop E, I am running this Whoop Juice 210. And it performed very well. Uh, I think my flying time was uh, just under four minutes uh, before we hit LVC and we kind of just come down and do some skating there. Um, and this is a 210. Uh, let me get my scale and we'll weigh those compared to those others so you know. Clear these guys out so we can do a little weight. Alright, we'll start with the smallest one, the MyLipo 175 Ma. Got 5 grams flat. 4.9 there right before I grabbed it. <laughs> 5.9 on the 205. And for the 210, 5.9 as well. So five more ma, and maybe a fraction of a gram there somewhere. But uh, I was pretty happy with those batteries. Um, I think what I'm going to do to try to uh, get a better grip on these Tiny Whoop batteries, uh, at least the, the ones that I have, uh, I'm not going to probably bother to stock uh, do a stock test. But uh, upcoming, we'll, we'll do a 6 millimeter motor test, and then... Probably in that same video, I'll do a battery test to see if there's any difference in thrust um, or if it's just purely runtime um, in these three batteries. Uh, you can get about three minutes of flight time um, with this one as well, but you add a little bit more mile, you get a little bit more time, and the gram difference isn't very much. Um, but you, you do kind of notice it in flight just slightly. Um, if you're super sensitive to the sticks, you'll notice the difference in weight ever so slightly. That's why every gram counts. Um, and this one is at a slight disadvantage because I've used foam tape to secure this uh, twiny, tiny whoop mount down. Um, and also, before I forget, uh, Happy Harry has sent me, or he is sending me a couple of mounts that are made for the whoopee. And um, in the meantime, I went ahead and, or actually before 
he said he was going to send me a couple because I don't have a printer. Um, I bought these from Great 3D. I think they were about $4. Um, I don't plan on using the protection up top just because the protection up top is so much heavier than the actual mount itself. For me, I I don't want to add weight and, and decrease my flight time or decrease the experience. I just want to mount the camera and go. Um, typically when I crash these things, I don't usually land upside down. They usually end up, you know, getting stuck on the ground and then you bump around into things. You don't typically land directly upside down. You might come down sideways or something and then roll over. But um, I haven't been through too many cameras when it comes to whooping around the house. So you can get from Great 3D or if you have a printer, you can download your own files and, and print yourself. Um, just to sum up, <laughs> the... Uh, Tiny Whoop has brighter LEDs, so if you're doing something like I did, you're going to be better off because you'll be able to see a little bit, and that little bit actually means a lot. Um, but if you're looking at your budget, you can Whoop and you can create a Whoopee for the price of just the blade indectrix, and then you have to add your FPV gear to that. And uh, for anyone who's wondering, here's a close up shot of how I soldered those on. Hopefully that focus in there. I just used the pigtail off the camera. And like I said earlier, so I could leave that on here. And I cut out a bit of the front. Let's see if I can show that very well. I don't know if I got enough light. Um, so I just snipped out the front so these batteries would slide through there. And then I used uh, what are uh, loom bands. I had to use three. Two will go around, but with my fingers I couldn't get this tied. And, and that secures it in. You can also, it does wobble around in there because there's space. Uh, you might want to put some foam on the either side to kind of keep it from wobbling. I don't know if that's going to have any impact or not on how it flies, but so far I've got a number of flights just like this and it flies just fine. Okay, if you have any questions or comments, leave those in the section down below. I will link the Whoop Juice down there and I'll link the Milo Epos down there as well and you can pick those up. Um, check out the, uh, the East Coast FPV also has some micro motors and I think they're labeled fast and really fast or super fast um, and I've got a couple sets sitting just over here but I'm saving those for a test for right now. And if you've forgotten I put the gnarly motors inside here which perform very very similarly to the Spintex. I think in the thrust test they were one gram difference um, and the Spintex are in this one and the Spintex don't have connectors. So, pick your upgrades and have some fun. Thanks for watching. Full disclosure, I was flying the Whoopee with the Devo 7 deviation firmware, and I have the NRF24L01 module inside that makes it compatible. Use the MJX protocol, and then you hit enter on that to select the E1010, and then you bind her up and you're all set. But uh, flying on this is a great advantage over the little, uh, what I keep calling a peanut controller. It's a tiny little thing. It just doesn't work for me. Uh, I'm a pincher now almost all the time except for when I'm flying larger toy quads. Um, so I was flying this in the runs that you see.